Now we begin the second part, uh, picking up where we left off. We left off at verse 16. Now uh, we're going to be uh, starting 17. And the uh, it doesn't say how he found out. When Jesus arrived, I'm sorry, it does. When he fired, arrived, he found that he had already been dead four days. The four days is significant, you see, because the Jewish idea was that the soul hovered around the body for three days, sort of, and then it left. And when it left, it's over. I mean, there's no way that soul is going back into that body. The body has started to de- decompose. So the four days is important in the, in the narrative, okay? Now, Bethany was close to Jerusalem about 15 stadia. It's about two miles. As I told you, you walk out that gate, forgot which gate it is, and you go down the hill, and you go up the hill onto the Mount of Olives, and you turn right, and you go down the other side of the Mount of Olives, and there it is. About two mile walk. After lunch, I used to take a walk. I used to walk all around that area because uh, I wanted to get to know it. And so many beautiful things happened there. And also, to get some exercise. Then I go back to work. Okay. Now, many of the Jews had gone out to Martha and Mary. Another beautiful thing about this text, the Jews never mean the rulers of Jerusalem who are opposed to Jesus. Now it just means many of the Jewish people, some of whom believe in Jesus, all of whom are sorry for Martha and Mary. And so, uh, many of the Jews had gone out, who had gone out, many of the Jews had gone out to Martha and Mary that they might console them in regard to their brother. When then Martha heard that Jesus came, the active one, she went out to meet him. But Mary remained in the house. He doesn't tell us why. Just says she remained. Now Martha then gets there. She says, she said to Jesus, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. It's a very discreet request, isn't it? Now that you're here, maybe you can do something still. Though another part of it says, no way. She's going to save a few minutes. Lord, he's been dead four days. You know what that means between us. I mean, the body started to decompose. He's dead, dead now. So that's why the four days is important. You see? Uh, Nevertheless, She says, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. This is very, it's like um, Our Lady, it's Cana, do whatever he tells you. It's sort of very discreet, you see. Uh, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha says, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. That's in the book of Daniel 12 and so forth. She knows that. That's the word of God. What does Jesus say to her? I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection. You see? He who believes in me, even if he die, will live. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? That means... You die in communion with me, don't you worry, you're going to live forever. You'll be with me forever. I love you. I want you to be with me forever. So, he who believes in me, we've got this beautiful, in communion with me, doesn't just mean, you know, what? Do you believe me? I guess I believe in Jesus. No, no, no. It means I have a living, conscious communion with him. You know what that means? According to the words we were just using? Uh, you know, we were using in another context, baptized in the Spirit. I have a living, conscious communion with Jesus. That's all it means, folks. You can go to a prayer meeting, get prayed over. You can go however you get it. You can just beg the Lord for it. And if you do, pray for the gift of tears. Because when you weep over your sins, that purifies your heart, and then you're ready for the grace. Does our Lord give it these days like bargain basement? Yes. I mean, not ready, not even knowing it's happening, you know, and he does it. Why? Because we are so hard up. 
Our church is in such bad shape. And you know that every baptized Christian has the world on his back. We're responsible for the world. And so that's why he says here, you see, uh, I am the resurrection and the life. You have life forever in me. And he who believes in me, even if he die, will live because you're in communion with me. And I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone living and believing in me, living now means living with him, not just breathing, will not die forever. You might die with your body, but if you're in communion with me, you're going to live forever because you're in communion with me. That's all of chapter 5. You may remember when we did chapter 5. <laughs> I hope you remember. Or maybe you can go back. If I don't know if you can get a hold of these things. Can you go back and get them? If you can, go on back to chapter 5 and hear what he says. Everyone living and believing in me will not die forever. Do you believe that? He's asking her. But when this gospel is read out on this second Sunday of Advent in cycle B, to whom is he talking? To us. We're right there. Remember how Vatican II says, when the gospel is read, it is still Christ proclaiming his gospel. It's not just the priest up there, blah, 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 blah. It's Christ proclaiming his gospel. So when you hear that, I'm the resurrection and the life, he who believes in me, even if he die, will live. Everyone living and believing, communion, with me will not die forever. Now, congregation, do you believe that? Do you know that? Do you look forward to that? Or you just hope, I hope, I hope that I'm in the state of grace. You can be in the state of grace. Just get to confession and stay there. And then you're walking in the day, the 12 hours of the day, you're walking in them. And you have the light of life. You see the levels at which these texts are moving for us? Do you believe that? Now Martha says, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, coming into the world. And uh, that ends this section, you see? So, we have now, uh, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, coming into the world. Now that's as far as she gets. Now the text goes on to tell us, uh, see that she goes back now to get Mary. Uh, whoops, wrong chapter. Oh, wrong chapter, excuse me. Um, Now, when she said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher, Hodidaskalos, is here and asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. Now, you have to remember that uh, if you walk into Bethany nowadays and you walk out the other side, you're close to a, a Franciscan monastery. And on the grounds of that Franciscan monastery is an old grave site. And you can see what these graves look like. And that's important. You see, uh, it, it's a cave hollowed into the, the earth. That earth is called Tufa. Well, it's called Tufa in Italy. But it's the same kind of earth. You can, with a pick, you can dig a hole in it. But once the air gets at it, it hardens. So you make a cave and you put some benches on the side. Then there's another cave in the back. Uh, and in the back, you see, uh, there are what they call uh, columbaria, places for the, for the doves. Now, that's just beautiful language. So when someone dies, they place him on one of the benches in the front part of the of the cave. Now, when the whole body is decomposed, they take all those bones and they put them in a lovely box called an ossuarium. We find many of these boxes with inscriptions on them. They're extremely valuable 
in trying to understand the customs, the languages, the names of the time. So it goes into the back, and there are all these these little pigeon holes, we would call them, but then they're just not very, our word is not very elegant, you know? And so, now he's only been dead four days, so he's in the front, because it takes, you know, well, maybe a year for the body to totally decompose. So there's ointment surrounding him, and, you know, he's there. And so, Martha is saying, Jesus, look, you know, uh, um, so, as soon as she rose and got up, for Jesus had not yet come into the village, as I started to say. I mean, I can picture the village because I lived there five years. You go down the hill, there's the village, there's the church. This is, and maybe this is the church that Lazarus was his home, you know, that sort of stuff. You really know. But on the other side of the town, which is a small town, you have this Franciscan monastery with its grounds, and on the grounds, you have a perfect first century tomb. You know just what they looked like. That's why it's so valuable, okay? Um, so, uh, so when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, so Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, now, she's going to say the same words as Martha, but there's a difference. She fell at his feet. You see, and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And now we come, and I'm only going to touch on this, and we'll begin the next time, because this is powerful. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed. And this is a very difficult word to translate. It looks like it meant angry, perturbed. Why? Because his brother, death had claimed his brother, a fellow human being. And in that death, he sees all the effects of sin weighing on the whole human race. You know, the wars, the cruelties, the cruelties to women. The, he sees it all in the death of Lazarus. And so he's perturbed. A little later on, he weeps. Now think of this, and it's with this I want to end. You see, think of this. God has emotions. Why? Because he's incarnate. He's upset by this death. You say, what, he could have fixed it? No, you don't understand. It's the destiny of mankind because of sin. And he is going to write that. huh? You see? And then, as we'll take up next time, right at this point, when he gets to the tomb, he weeps. God weeps. Think of it. He's so united to us that he weeps. He weeps. So that when we're scared or frightened or weeping, he weeps with us. We can never forget that. Such a precious line. I have a friend who wrote a whole article on this line, and Jesus wept. You see, it is so precious. And Jesus wept. What we have now, we're going to return to this, start quickly at verse uh, 18, 28 rather, next time, uh, and go on from there to this awesome story of the power of Jesus. The one who is perturbed, the one who weeps, can also be the one who says, Lazarus, dead man, come out. Amen.